if you're new to the hobby of scale model building or returning after a long break, then Tamiya should be high on your list of manufacturers to choose from. I remember Tamiya kits since I first started building over 40 years ago. They still remain as some of the best engineered kits on the market. So this build series is going to concentrate on one of Tamiya's classic kits that was upgraded about 20 years ago with new tooling and photo etch parts. It's the perfect mix of classic Tamiya armor kit with a hint of modern improvement. Let's have a look and see what we get in the box. Oh look, final tracks. Well, I did test glue this one with VMS 5K CA4 photo etch. Track sprues, which every AFE modeler knows about. The ubiquitous Tamiya bathtub style lower hull. Two sprues for the turret. I can see lots of spare parts in here, which is great. Two new generation figures. The upper hull sprue. Not a lot of changes here except the tools and I believe the check plate patterns. And finally the decals, PE and the metal barrel. I'll be very interested to see how these decals go. So let's take a quick look over the paperwork that comes with the kit. The first one will be the painting callout guide and that's typical Tamiya. Black and white. Honestly this is where Tamiya has always lacked a little bit of investment in their kits but we can certainly work with this. We will be completing the 15th Panzer Division in Tunisia version. Dak is back, baby. Tamiya's Tech Tips Guide. Useful for the novice model maker, but I'll just put this aside for now. The Detailed Instruction Guide. What's always been welcome with Tamiya kits is the written history section in these instruction kits. It provides us with a really interesting background to the kit that we're going to make. And inside we have the step-by-step -step instructions. Always detailed and easy to follow with Tamiya. Okay, so let's start with the lower hole and the suspension. Using my awesome cutters from SMS here in Australia, I cut out the parts needed, including the swing arms. There's a couple of tricky things here to be careful with. The swing arms are not all the same, so it's important to check the instructions because solid foundations on these kits are important or you'll end up being very frustrated trying to fix silly mistakes. A quick clean up and they're ready to go. As with most Tamiya armor kits, there's no adjustment in the swing arm travel. Not a big deal for me with this kit, as I'm just gonna put this together and have it on a flat surface. The great thing about Tamiya kits, something you're gonna hear again and again is how well they fit together. And it's so very true. These parts really just fall together and using Tamiya's extra thin cement makes this process really enjoyable. Something one of my subscribers asked me is, is it more appropriate to follow the step-by-step -step instructions or build it out of sequence? Now for a beginner or a novice builder, I'm gonna say, follow the instructions. You can't go wrong and therefore you're gonna enjoy the build and you're gonna enjoy the results. So I'm building this kit partly out of sequence because I'm terrible at being told what to do, but mostly because I'm making some subtle modifications to improve the final model. Which way is best? Well. You be the judge. It's up to you, really. Onto the rear, and I fit the rear hull plate, the exhaust, and the tow point. Panzer 3s and Panzer 4s, for that matter, don't have a lot of tools and such bolted to their rear hull plates. Nothing like a Tiger tank, for example. But there's still plenty of things here that we will have fun painting and weathering later on in the build process. The exhausts are of particular interest as they are fairly exposed and depending on how you plan to weather your model, they can be anything from relatively clean to very rusty examples. As scale modelers, it's exciting because it really gives us a lot of room and scope for adding interest to the final model. So the exhaust shrouds on the Panzer III has a screen, a mesh screen which goes over the edge of those and it's replicated here with a photo etch screen. Now 
using VMS Flexi 5K CA for photo etch, this is going to be easy. I just have to apply the glue using a piece of wire and we're done. All except I make a bit of an oopsie here. So I've put the screen on the wrong way. A really silly mistake, but look, that's one that I can easily correct. And the cleanup can be done using VMS glue de bonder for what will be a perfectly smooth result. I think VMS de bonder is a lifesaver in these kind of issues, and it's absolutely worth investing in for any model. If you're going to use CA, as a glue of choice, and I think you should be if you're going to do photo etch, you absolutely need a good quality debonder. Super glue residue on plastic can be hard to remove as most debonders will not just remove the glue, but they'll also react with the plastic you're trying to clean, thus ruining the model. Not ideal. VMS glue debonder is the only product I've found so far that doesn't react with other plastics. I'm sure there's probably other ex excellent debonders out in the marketplace, but this is one I'm happy to recommend. It's really easy to use, as you can see here. The applicator brush inside the lid is a very handy inclusion. Obviously, it would be much easier if I didn't make the mistakes to begin with, but this can just show that even experienced or seasoned modelers can make the simplest of errors. We just normally edit them out of the final cut so you don't see them. So the next step, being an AFE, is to build all of the wheels. And if you've ever built a tank or any other kind of tracked armoured fighting vehicle, you'll know the absolute joy of putting together the wheels. As you can see, there are mini road wheels as there are paired at each station on the suspension. The dry sprockets and idler wheels similarly are two-piece. Now on the subject of rubber road wheels on tanks and other AFEs, Let's discuss the fashionable process of cutting off chunks of rubber to show wear. Look, it does happen, and there are some examples of rubber wearing to the point of cracking or even tearing. It's just not as common as I think a lot of modelers would like us to believe. If you're going to include in your models a word of caution, I think less is more. So let's just leave these and have a look at the result of what they become rather than me show you how to go through this step by step. I'm sure you don't need to sit through the entire wheel building process. So the stowage bin on the rear of the Panzer III turret comes as a closed lid piece in this kit. I decided here that I wanted the lid to be open and have an old tarp hanging out of the opening. So to do this, I had to score the relevant lines into the lid using a hobby blade and then gently bend it without breaking the lid. To make the tarp, I used a section from the instructions that was blank with no printing on it. It's essentially like copy paper, so I cut a section off, I fold it into shape and I work with it until it fits and looks similar to how I want the tarp to appear. I know a task like this may seem intimidating for some, but really it's an easy modification to make. Just take your time and be careful with the scoring of the plastic lid and the rest really just falls into place. It's pretty easy. You can see here I'm just teasing the paper into shape and position. Compared to using epoxy putty, this is a much easier method to make tarps in any size or shape. As you can see here, I'm having to work a little bit to get the paper to sit in here the way I want it to. But with everything, a little perseverance, it will come through in the end. The bottle of VMS Paper Shaper here had a bit of a blockage from previous use, 
not something I've had happen before, but there you go, it's there. So I've just have to clean that out with a piece of wire. I can then use the VMS paper shaper with a brush and I just wet the paper and work with it until the desired shape's achieved. So I need to be careful here because if I handle the paper too much, it will begin to separate slightly and the fibres will come out and stand proud of the surface. I don't want too much of that, even though I want a weathered look to the tarp. So a little care here and we'll get the result we're looking for. You'll notice that I'm not replacing any of the tools or tool clamps with aftermarket photo etch. Usually I would because although Tamiya moulds reasonable facsimiles of these pieces, there's no denying that aftermarket pieces are often much crisper or complete in their details. Because this is essentially an out of the box build, I won't be replacing any of those components. I'm also gluing down the tools now and not after I've painted the model. This is contrary to my normal practice as I normally like to fully paint and chip them off the vehicle. This time, however, as the build's about feels of the 1980s, I'm going to do this old school. I also feel like many novice builders glue these components on and then paint them along with the rest of the model. So in the spirit of inclusiveness, I'll do the same so I can demonstrate how I do it. Okay, time for some texture. So, German armour during this period had a fairly smooth texture on its face, but it wasn't perfectly smooth. There are several ways to replicate this, and here I prefer the cement stippling method. So using Mr. Cement Deluxe, I stipple it onto the surface of the turret. Luckily included in the bottle is a nylon bristled brush, which is perfect for this process. So working around the turret, I'm careful to apply and stipple the cement without contacting surfaces I don't want covered. This is then completed by polishing the surface with fine abrasive paper or a sponge to knock down the peaks in the plastic surface. With this kit, you can build up the main armament and attach it to the mantlet prior to fitting it to the turret. 
This gives us tons of room to paint and detail these parts if we're going to leave the hatches open. But as I'm going to finish this with closed hatches, I'll squeeze the gun in and glue the mantlet in place. The hatches for the Commander's Coppola are fairly realistic. I debated for a while as to whether or not I wanted to include the supplied command figure. To me, I have gone to a lot of effort to improve their plastic figures over the last few years. I mean, let's face it, they used to be a bit of a joke. And included in this kit is a DAC figure and an option for a regular armoured crew uniformed figure. I chose not to include either figure as what I'm going to do is pose this piece with the hatches closed. Apparently, this isn't as easy a process as I was hoping, so I've had to use a little Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to help me keep these in position. And that's a wrap. Building this Tamiya Panzer III has taken me back to the days of my youth. A simple, out-of-the-box build with minor improvements. I've kept the vinyl tracks, which is really a big thing in itself for me, as I've always disliked those. That said, it strangely feels good to put them into this build and if for no other reason than the nostalgic value alone. These kits just fall together. Their engineering is... Yeah, it still needs something. Stowage. Uh, Stowage and I have a bit of a love-hate relationship, really. But this time I have a plan. I'm going to add some helmets and water bottles to the turret exterior. It's a bit of a DAC cliche, I know, but still totally accurate. Then there's some fuel and water jerry cans. Now these are going to come in handy in a future video, but no, I'm not going to reveal those secrets just yet. So that's it. Construction of this somewhat nostalgic to me kit is done. We need to move on to the painting next, and that's going to be an interesting process. Normally you'd see a simple and boring German DAC yellow colour scheme or some winter whitewash. No, 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 not this time. It's going to combine some unusual DAC equipment, some figures, and well, let's just say some new techniques that I'm really keen to showcase. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider joining my growing subscriber list and hitting the like button as it really does help me with the channel and it keeps the YouTube algorithm happy so I can continue to bring you more content. Also, please consider watching one of my other videos. You'll see the links on the screen. And until next time, keep building models, support your local vendors, and we'll see you in the next one.